me, Jake, from JakeMan21642. Today I definitely have a bit of an unexpected video for you. This is my new daily driver. Now, this is not, this does not mean uh, my entire fleet is gone or anything like that. Basically, this is replacing my 2003 Honda Accord. Um, before I get into the video of this, I'll just say, the Accord was just kind of getting to the point where I was basically spending every month the amount of money doing things to that car that I could be paying for a car payment for a much nicer car. It finally got to the point where I was having some clutch and transmission issues with that car and I just could not justify putting any more money into it and I decided to trade it on this. I got an excellent deal on this car through my work. I'll go ahead and say right now at the beginning of this video I'm not rich. Please don't think I'm rich because I'm driving this. I paid significantly less for this car, certified pre-owned with gap insurance, everything said and done out the door with the deal, I still paid significantly less for this car than a brand new Civic LX. So like I said, please take that into account. But this did replace the Accord. No, there will not be a final video of the Accord. Um, I just wanted it gone. I know I haven't made videos of it in a year, but it looked the same. It was a silver Accord. Ooh, hello. That's an interesting sight. Anyway, back to my car. Um, if you want to look at a silver Accord, go to any parking lot. Um, really, I'd, there was nothing that had changed with it in the last year or so that would really be worth making a video on. And like I said, I just wanted the car gone. I'm in the middle of school right now. I don't think a lot of people realize I have a job and I'm also a student outside of YouTube. So. That's why it's kind of taken me a week of having this in my possession and finally getting to do a video. But anyway, I really just needed a new car. I couldn't deal with the Accord anymore. And from the way it looks like things are turning out now, the Accord may not be going too far. But anyway, this is my new car. This is a 2012 Volvo S60 T6 all-wheel drive. Um, and I'm absolutely in love with it. The first thing I have to say about this car is I really wasn't looking at these at first because I didn't think it would be in my budget. And my boss kind of texted me one night and asked me to look at something in our system when I got home from school. And that's when I saw how much this car had been marked down and I just kind of jumped on it. But this car is really perfect. This is pretty much a base model T6. So this is the T6 all wheel drive. This was about a $4,500 upgrade from a T5 with the five cylinder when these were brand new. But mine really doesn't have any added extra options, which is fine with me. The only thing I kind of wish it had was blind spot monitoring which you can tell because it doesn't have the little cameras under there. But that's just because I've driven 90s and early 2000s cars my entire life. And I'm really not used to yet just how thick all of the pillars on this car are. But I'll definitely get used to that and it's not something. But this doesn't have a backup camera. Um, it does have the city safety system, which was actually very nice. Um, this made my insurance quite cheaper than I expected it to be when I registered this car. This car was actually only about $60 more a month to insure than my 15-year-old Honda, which I'm not complaining considering it has 300 horsepower. But like I said, it doesn't have any of the tech garbage, which is fine with me. I wouldn't have wanted it anyway. It doesn't have a backup camera. Um, doesn't have adaptive cruise. None of that stuff that just would have broken and I wouldn't have used it anyway. But outside, as you can see, I just tinted the windows yesterday. It has 35% uh, window tint all the way around, just like I've done on all the rest of my cars. It's really at the point where I just can't live with that, and especially on a silver sedan. It just looks so good. This is the electric silver metallic exterior, which is probably one of my favorite Volvo colors. It just looks so clean on everything. It may be boring, but the Accord really made me appreciate having a silver car. People don't notice you. Your car, you can go nine, ten days without washing your car, and it'll really look exactly the same. Up front, you can see this is a T6. It does have the uh, active bending HID headlights. Really cool features. Something I never thought I'd really care about, but these are really nice at night. My Accord's headlights were like driving down the road with a candle on the front of my car, so this is a huge upgrade. Does have the uh, headlamp washers here as well. Does also have the LED daytime running lights, which look really cool going down the road right there. Tow hook behind that cover. I haven't really even done anything yet other than wash the car and throw some tire shine on it yesterday. They did, of course, detail it before I bought it. Typical Volvo, you have the uh, set and silver trim around your windows right here. And up top, you do have your sunroof on this one, as well as your satellite radio antenna right there. Like I said, S60 and T6 all-wheel drive on the back of the car. And then your dual exhaust tips down below. 
Coming up to this side, this one is riding on Goodyear Eagle Sport tires. Expensive, cheap tires, but they're 235 40 R18s, so it does have 18-inch wheels, which is a pretty big upgrade for me. As you can see, too, they're relatively new tires. Judging by Carfax, they were put on within like the last 3,000 miles or so. They're in really nice shape, and you can see, too, whoever balanced them did it the right way and actually used the little magnets. My one thing I have to say about this car, and it definitely will be an upgrade I do in the future, is uh, the brakes. You can definitely tell that there's not much of a brake change between the T5 and the T6. Not that they're unsafe by any means or they're bad, just I definitely would like to put a little bit more uh, powerful brakes on this car for aggressive driving. So these are definitely probably original. I know the rear pads uh, we replaced to certify it, but I'll probably look into like some EDC or some stop tech brakes eventually. Just an upgrade. And like I said, these are still su sufficient. They're more than enough. Also do have the LED turn signal indicators right there. We'll go ahead and get in this one and start it up. Does include your typical Volvo key fob, of course, with lock, unlock, your trunk release right there, as well as panic, and then this button, which turns the LEDs as well as the parking lamps on. Puddle lamps up underneath of the mirrors. And then I've never checked, but I believe, yep, cuts the beautiful LED tail lights that this has on as well. So step in. And this, of course, too, does have the black leather or the off-black leather interior. I would not have bought it if it did. I like these cars, but seriously, the soft beige interior is just not my thing. Um, down below, well, the door sills does have a power driver's seat with your three-person memory right there, which is something I've never had. Seats are in really good shape. I mean, they definitely could probably uh, use some leather conditioner better than what we use at work, but really the interior of this car is in mint condition see just some of my junk in the door panel and then I do have that right there considering I did just get it tinted yesterday. Well uh, the next thing I plan on doing for this car is getting a set of weather techs. This is why I hate carpeted floor mats. This is just from about four or five days of driving so that's gonna be the next thing that goes away on this car. Start it, put on the brake, key in the slot and And you can hear that wonderful 3-liter turbo. I just love the sound of this engine. Inside, as you can see, leather-wrapped steering wheel. This steering wheel is really nice. I'm used to all the old cars I've owned that had really thin steering wheels, but this has a nice, grippy texture to it. Usually not a fan of three-spoke wheels because I like to, when I'm on the highway, just hold on the bottom. But since this has the cut through, it's not as bad. I usually wind up just kind of chilling like that or so. Um, cruise control, like I said, this doesn't have adaptive cruise. I don't care. Adaptive cruise honestly creeps me out. I don't trust it. If this had it, I probably wouldn't even use it anyway. On this side are your audio system controls and all of that. Up top, I mean, I've, I have so many videos of these on the channel. I don't even know if I need to go all through this, but... It's typical Volvo, it's typical newer luxury car, everything is extremely high quality. You have this beautiful leather on the door, which I love. And another thing too, going back to the steering, you can go through the census system right here. I believe it is settings and car settings. Yeah, and go to steering wheel force. It is a electro hydraulic unit. So it's nice because you get all the nice parts of uh, hydraulic steering without all the not so nice parts. Like it definitely has hydraulic steering feel very sharp it has a nice little kickback to it when you're getting aggressive but it's also nice because it doesn't do all the bad things about hydraulic steering like it doesn't fight the crown in the road you don't feel every little groove and things like that it's very smooth but the steering force you can actually change it and i don't even know why you would need to the normal setting which is medium is more than enough that uh, when i turn right off of my street every morning leaving for class that it doesn't even auto cancel the turn signal because it requires such a little amount of steering input. It's really nice. That's really what impressed me the most because I've spent a lot of time behind the wheel of the T5s but not the T6 and the steering feel in this car is just fantastic. You can see on the wheel too, I also did uh, put this on yesterday. Typical of these, especially in the south where these cars sit in the heat all day with the black interior and no tint before I owned it, the blue had all peeled off of the badge. So I got a new badge on eBay for like 10 or 11 bucks. Um, dashboard, of course, all the soft material, high quality, um, headlight controls over here, your trunk fuel cap release, parking brake, which is electronic, which is a lot less annoying than I was expecting. 
Um, when you have, which is something I didn't realize because usually when you're moving these around the lot, you don't put your seatbelt on. But uh, when you have your seatbelt on and you put it in drive and touch the gas, the parking brake will automatically disengage, which is very nice. Gauge shimmer right there and your rear fog light controls. Gauges in the middle, I'm so glad I was able to get an early model that has these beautiful gauges. I mean, the digital cluster is nice, especially in performance mode, which is really a nice looking cluster, but this is just such a clean, classic look. I think it adds so much more to the interior than just having a screen right here. Um, you have your speedometer, your tachometer on that side. You have the world's most unoptimistic trip computer right there, as I've already learned. And then you can see on this side, it has just over 48,000 miles. I got it earlier this week with a little over 47 on it. You can scroll from right here, bring up all kinds of things on that display. I'm sure my average MPG will go up. I've just kind of been having fun with 300 horsepower and all wheel drive for the first week of ownership to, uh, I guess, put it that way. In the middle, this is Volvo's original um, census system. I really like this system. I know it gets a lot of hate. People say it's button crazy. It's complicated to use. It's confusing. Honestly, it's for people like me who would much rather have controls like this, where you basically use this knob and this knob and then the buttons. It's honestly, everyone praises iDrive. I think this is way less annoying to use than iDrive. It's way easier. Like I said, for people like me who would rather have a traditional radio set up than a touch screen or, you know, five iPads glued to your dashboard, this is simple to use. It's responsive. It looks clean. More than enough for me. This one doesn't have factory navigation. I probably wouldn't use it anyway. I have a cell phone. I can use Waze. That's what I end up doing anyway. And it's just like my Accord. If I'm Bluetooth streaming from my phone, Waze directions will come through the speakers. But you have your radio, media, telephone, my car, satellite radio, of course. Um, part of buying a certified pre-owned Volvo is you get six months free of satellite radio, which is very, very nice. Um, all of that, though, easy to use. You have your presets. This can also work as a dial pad on the phone. The Bluetooth phone in this car as well is one of the better systems I've used in a car in a while. Down below, you do have dual zone automatic climate control, different zones, all of that. Heated seats too, which is something after the Accord that I cannot live without, so glad I have it. This button, press it, which they're actually already down at the moment, but when you press that button, both of the rear headrests will drop down. I just leave them down because I'm the only person in the car 90% of the time, and it's it helps a lot with visibility because, like I said, I'm definitely getting used to that, and that, and that. I mean, these are similar to my Accord, but still, I'm so used to older cars where the pillars are th so thin. You get in my 240, and it's like being in a fish tank after being in this thing. Right here is probably the biggest thing everyone is going to be um, shocked and amazed that I bought. This one is the six-speed automatic, which of course was the only transmission you could get on these. Sport and manual mode. I'll be honest right now, I'm not mad it's automatic days for school where I easily drive 90, 120 miles and sitting in traffic going first, second, first, second, first, second, third, first, second. It was getting old. I mean, I still love manuals. I'll definitely own another one. It was just not anymore. Um, as a daily driver, I was honestly starting to drive my 240 more than the Accord anyway. And with 300 horsepower, I really can't complain. This is an Eisen transmission, so it's very responsive there hasn't been a moment yet where I've honestly hated this transmission, but I'm really starting to appreciate having an automatic after a week of driving it. I can't believe I'm saying it. Um, I think me, I'm, I'm just getting spoiled, I'll admit that. But around here, it's all the nice aluminum trim. It really looks great. Back here, two cup holders. Probably my one complaint about this car is that it does not have a sunglasses container like my Accord did, but I mean, if that's the worst part about your car is it doesn't have a sunglasses container, I think you're doing pretty damn good. Um, usually what I do is they just end up back there, which, by the way, I learned after buying one of these that this compartment's actually illuminated at night. It's really nice. Um, like I said, there are two cup holders, 12-volt outlet right there. I need to figure out a way to uh, wire in a dash cam somehow since the power outlet is there and back there, but I'll get that figured out. Like I said, cover over that. And I have to say, too, I'm so happy inside that this one has the, um, I believe these are called the Urban Metal Inlays. Either way, they're just aluminum trim. So glad it has that instead of wood grain. I, I hate wood grain. But back here, you do have a padded armrest in the middle. Storage in there, your USB and auxiliary in. You can see I really haven't even transferred all of my junk over to this car uh, from my old one yet. It, it still kind of feels surreal that something this nice is mine. Seats, I mean, it's a Volvo. I think that's about all I have to say when it comes to seats is that it's a Volvo. They're very comfortable. They're supportive. Coming from a 7th Gen Accord to these seats, 
is uh, definitely very nice. Not saying that the Accord has bad seats at all, I'm saying actually that they feel very similar. They're both very comfortable seats that uh, hold me very well. Lumbar controls are right there in the middle. Sunroof, of course. Once again, another one of those things I can't live without. I think my 240 is actually the only car I've owned that doesn't have a sunroof or isn't a convertible. Auto dimming rear view mirror, which is why I'm probably going to get a new dash cam set up instead of the mirror one from the Accord. I'm kind of tired of watching that thing shake down the road anyway. But auto dimming rear view mirror, compass, which is really nice. Like I said, the city safety system behind there, which, I mean, it's cool, I guess. Nice to have it. If I'm really not paying attention about to rear end someone, that'll help. But uh, around here, interior lighting controls, you have the passenger airbag on and off, and your sunroof controls right there. Garage link, even though I park on the street. And then your illuminated vanity mirrors. You know, go ahead and step out, show you guys the rest of the car. Like I said, I'm sorry if you're bored because I know I have so many tours of these on my channel. I can't put the window down, so I'm going to make sure I have the spare key with me. Back seat, everything follows through. It's the same beautiful leather on the door. I just love this texture to it. And this isn't like the older Volvo leather either, where it's destroyed after 60,000 miles. I've been in these with triple the mileage that this one has, and they're just a solid inside. Headrest, just pop it back up like that. But back here, everything follows through. Like I said, it's the same nice high quality leather on the back of the seats with that beautiful graining. You have storage, 12 volt outlet right there and storage on the back of that seat. Armrest in the middle, two cup holders, storage in there and then this can function as a trunk pass through. You can see over here I just have, I'm already that OCD that this is the only thing in the car. But I mean, very comfortable interior, it's high quality. This is definitely, it's so quiet, especially too, coming from a Honda. It's so quiet going down the road in this. I already have, especially since I have about 53,000 miles of uh, CPO warranty to burn up, um, I've definitely got some trips planned with this car. I even have a friend who has some family on the West Coast, and we've both talked about driving out there since we were in high school, so maybe that will finally happen. Who knows? You can see right here too, we have the air vents built into the pillars. Very nice touch in this car. Once again, the LED taillights, really a beautiful design. One of my favorite parts, you can always tell when it's one of these going down the road at night. Inside the trunk, really good amount of room. I mean, it's definitely smaller than my Accord, which is fine, it'll keep me from filling it with junk just like the Accord. Back seat release is up here, and you also do have your hinges on the sides, which go down inside of these compartments so they don't interfere with your cargo. Different tie downs, things like that. Underneath of here, this is probably the second biggest drawback, which is funny, this should probably be, I should probably be more concerned about this than no sunglasses container. No spare tire, it does have a mobility kit, which is hilarious too that it's continental tow hook and all of that. Honestly, I'm not too worried about uh, not having a spare tire. I've owned so many junk cars that I still have AAA and also the CPO warranty comes with uh, roadside assistance. I'm probably anyway, um, once I have the money going, or probably going to run these for the winter and then get a set of either Michelin's or Pirelli's. They're good years. They'll probably last 20,000 miles like every other set of good years I've owned. Fuel cap right here. Release it from inside. On the side, everything follows through. And up front, do have a full power passenger seat. Stepping inside, I'll show you since I pop both of the headrests back up. Just press that. That's a very typical Volvo feature right there. Um, inside of here, this one did of course come with all of the owner's literature. It actually came with a surprising amount of literature from the previous owners, um, including some medical paperwork or some health insurance related paperwork it looked like that had a pretty decent amount of personal information on it. So clean out your cars when you get rid of them, people. They're very lucky that I got this car and no, I did not keep that. I destroyed all of that. Also did find a, uh, of course I have their address, so I was able to find the car on Google Maps. And it seems like whoever owned it was also in the Navy because I found a uh, receipt from a Navy exchange on a base. So pretty cool right there. But like I said, owner's literature. I've already got um, all this stuff down here too. A lot of the delivery paperwork from the car. And that's just my tent information. This was the bag that uh, the new badge came in.
And up front you can see the headlights like I said, and then it has the LED daytime running lights and the grill. I love these HIDs. I never thought I'd say it, but people actually move out of the way when you have these. And the active bending part, it kind of freaked me out at first, but that's really cool actually. Especially going around the city, navigating around like dark alleys and stuff like that, it's really nice. But under the hood, this does have the three liter um, inline six cylinder turbocharged, of course. And you can see they really do shoehorn this engine in here, so I'm glad I got the warranty. But honestly, I'm not worried reliability wise. Like I said, I've been in these cars with triple the miles that this one has, and they felt exactly the same. Um, and I mean, everything you need under here is relatively easy to access. You have your coolant, power steering fluid, that is your oil filter down there. Actually, does still have a dipstick, unlike a lot of new cars. You can see your transmission way down there. So like I said, it definitely is shoehorned in here, but this engine is amazing. I'm so glad I was able to find one with the T6. I love the older five cylinder. The new drive E engines are fantastic as well, but there's just something about this. I've never owned a car bigger than a four cylinder either. So this is definitely a new experience for me. Up here, um, your battery you can access that, brake fluid right there. I think I may look into getting a uh, strut tower brace off of an R design. This car still handles absolutely perfect. You can carry a pretty crazy amount of speed in the corners with this car, but that would definitely be something I'd like. You also do have uh, these quick releases right here, which I'm not going to do it, but you can pull these and that'll release the headlights out. Nice and easy compared to my Accord where you had to take the entire front bumper off to get it. But let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what you guys think. This is my new car. I could not be more excited. If anything, I kind of feel like this car will make me feel a little more compelled to do stuff with the Beetle and actually drive it. And now that I'm not chasing issues on a 15-year-old Honda, I can play with my other money pits. So, like I said too, this car is certified pre-owned, so I probably won't be doing a lot of modifications. Polestar 2 maybe, but I really, so far, have not felt that I need that much power. So I will be doing update videos and things like that, but not much is really going to change on it. So anyways, guys, let me know what you want to see with this car. Let me know what you think. I'm so excited to have it, and don't worry, there will be plenty of test drive videos and all kinds of stuff like that. As always, guys, thanks for watching.